Welcome to our first video for N2 Industrial Electronics. Now, because of the high demand or the lot of questions I've been getting to make these videos, you can show your appreciation by hitting that like button, sharing these videos, and watching the adverts from start to finish. Now, for module one, we'll be looking at DC circuit theory. For DC circuit theory, there are some definitions that we need to know. For direct current, it is defined as the current that flows in one direction only and does not alter in polarity. A conductor allows current to flow through a circuit. If we look at this circuit, you'll see the light bulb is illuminated and the best relative conductivity is known as silver. Now, an insulator like glass or porcelain is defined as not allowing current to flow. Therefore, on this circuit, you'll see the light bulb is not illuminated. For resistance, it is defined as the opposition to the flow of current. What are the factors that affect resistance? The type of material, the length of the material, the area, and the temperature in which the material operates. Now, to define Ohm's law, it is the current in a DC circuit it is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to resistance, as long as temperature remains constant. Now, using this pyramid, we can define or derive the formulas for Ohm's law. Voltage will be equal to current multiplied by resistance. Current will be voltage divided by resistance. And the resistance will be voltage divided by current. For Kirchhoff's current law, also known as the first law, the total current flowing towards a junction is equal to the total current flowing away from that junction. In other words, the algebraic sum of the currents at a junction is equal to zero. For Kirchhoff's voltage law, which is our second law, the voltage applied to a closed circuit is equal to the sum of the voltage drops in that circuit. In other words, the algebraic sum of all the EMFs and the voltage drops is equal to zero. And this brings us to our first calculation. And this is a resistor combination circuit. At first glance, this may seem a difficult question. But if we look a little closer, we can see that the two resistors are two and R3 are actually both connected together in a series combination. So we can add them together to produce a resultant resistance. Therefore, R2 plus R3 is equal to eight ohms plus four ohms. This series combination gives us 12 ohms. So we can simplify the circuit further. We can replace resistor R2 and R3 above with a single resistor with a resistance value of 12 ohms. So our circuit now has a single resistor RS in parallel with the resistor R4. Using our resistors in parallel equation, we can reduce this parallel combination to a single equivalent resistor value of RP using the formula for two parallel connected resistors as follows. RS multiplied by R4 divided by RS plus R4. Let's substitute the values in. 12 multiplied by 12 divided by 12 plus 12 gives us a parallel combination of six ohms. The resultant resistive circuit now looks something like this. We can see that the two remaining resistances, R1 and R parallel, are connected together in a series combination. And again, they can be added together so that the total circuit resistance between points A and B will be given as follows. R parallel plus R1 will give us a total resistance of 12 ohms. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to uh, show your appreciation by subscribing, liking, and sharing these videos. Thank you.